Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cashers Round Play of the 2017 PWBA Wichita Open. Six more games to determine the top 12 players who will advance to match play at 1 p.m. Central Time this afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern. Of course, by the end of the day, we will have our four TV finalists. That will be determined this evening at the end of match play and, of course, our group stepladder finals. Along with Jason Thomas, name is Emil Williams, Jr. Can we welcome you to Bowl TV on Extra Frame? It's a good day for bowling, not only here in Wichita, but Jonesboro, Arkansas as well. So if you're a fan of Extra Frame, be sure to check out the Extra Frame Greater Jonesboro Open. A squad qualifying kicking off today. The crew also in attendance there as well. Appreciate you tuning in. Have a couple pairs for you today and a little bit in between if we can get some video. Of course, try to get everything set in the morning because we don't really have time to reset it during uh, our small breaks in the afternoon. So you'll get a little bit of 24 if you're watching 25 and 26, which is what we're watching now. And then a little bit of 23 when we're on 21 and 22. Right now you're watching Brandy Branca, Diana Zabialova, and Shannon O'Keefe. All your qualifying results and needs, be sure to check out pwba.com slash live. Live scoring, the link is available as well, so don't forget about that. Your 12-game leader was C.T. Rockman from Malaysia. He added a 297 game yesterday as well. Great bowling to C.T. Sinley Jane was second. At plus 183, Juliana Franco was third from Colombia. At plus 158, Liz Johnson was in fourth. And, uh, excuse me, at plus 103, Amanda Green was fifth, plus 101. Last cashers round spot went to Shaidatul Hamidi, who made the TV finals of the Wichita Open last season. She's at minus 31. That was the number. Esther Chia, Team Malaysia teammate, also made the cut. She was 31st. Linda Barnes got in there, along with Dasha Kovalova, Liz Colkin. Oh, were your final five. Just missing the cut, but uh, did make uh, some, some money this week. Got a couple checks. Ashley Galante is in the cash, is, uh, in the cash cut, excuse me, along with Robin Rinslow. We appreciate you tuning in. So far, so good for the most part, but I can tell it could be one of those mornings where technology just doesn't seem to want to cooperate with you.
in just a second. We'll throw up our uh, live now graphic, but there are a lot of cool items on our PWBA Facebook page this morning and from yesterday for that matter as well. Couple stories in regards to Kelly Kulik from the Wichita Eagle, for example. Linda Barnes, the story written uh, on her from the Wichita Eagle as well. We posted that one this morning, so be sure to check those out. Big thanks to the Wichita Eagle and all of the local media. Of course, Wichita, just a fantastic bowling community. And the coverage this week has been fantastic from 102.1 The Bull. Country Radio here in Wichita, KSN TV, NBC affiliate, and the Wichita Eagle. Thank you. Die for Shannon O'Keefe. So 21 and 22 will finish first. So we haven't seen that pair yet. We will take you there here momentarily. that spare. Let's take a look at Liz Culkin. Didn't back there for Liz. Culkin making again the cashers round qualified 28th at minus 19. Right now top 12 would be plus 55 that would be Holly Ann Johansson. Wichita State, two non-members, or excuse me, three. In the cashers round, three amateurs this week. Making the top 32, Liana Franco from Columbia. Pretty good showing at the Queens as well. Holly and Johansson and Tashana Saraus from Aruba. Which went to Maryland Eastern Shore. NTCA. Time first team All American and second team All American this past season. MEAC Player of the Year. So more youth being served here on the PWBA Tour. Again, Liz Culkin, Timi Itakura from Japan. Her first event of the season. She's made the cut. In fact, she was in the top ten throughout the day, for the most part, and in some cases even in the top five. And she is ninth coming into today, plus 61. Josie Ernest Barnes in tenth. On that pair as well at plus 60. Two foot pattern, 27.66 milliliters of oil. If you haven't seen the pattern, 
certainly take a look at it. You can find that on pwba.com slash live as well or pwba.com. It's a pattern that has seen players play right near the gutter. Some have been playing the middle portion of the lane. Yesterday we had a burn squad. We will have one more today as well. Match play will be without a real oil. Of course, less players today will be even less in match play. So we'll see how things break down today as opposed to yesterday. cool thing on Facebook when you post a panoramic photo it allows you to essentially swipe left and right to scroll get a kind of a 360 type view to see exactly what you're looking at in front of me Kelly Kulik Playing the gutter. We saw her playing the gutter towards the end of round number one. Yesterday on 25 and 26. Had some pretty good success. Cassandra Luthold was on her pair that game as well. And Kelly still starting with that strategy. Unsure where she played on the latter portions of round number two. But again, it was a it was definitely a, a mixed bat. Colkin will be first to start the tenth frame. Again, Cashers round. Game number one. And two seven. Culkin, of course, one of many players who will have some familiar surroundings next week. The tour heads to Lincoln, Nebraska. As a former All-American and a national champion, the Corn Huskers. Bear. Two all seven in the books for Colkin. Josie Ernest, seven spare. On a field to come. Let's take you quickly over to Brandy Branca. A double here in the tenth. Quality shots 
in the 10th frame. Very nice 216 to start. Well, key for the big double in the 10th frame. Couple splits. One developed into an 810. And Zavialova playing the outside with some surface as well. I mentioned Hachimi Itakura. We'll show you. Style and form from Japan. Very simple and effective. Zavi Oliva. Good shot. Five in a row for Diana Z. Shoots 189 with three in the tenth. Already game one, just about in the books. Game two on 21 and 22. Esther Chia, Juliana Franco, and Liz Johnson. 25 and 26. Daria Kovalova, Sabrina Divis, and Jen Higgins. Coming up in game two. All right, 210 for Diana Z. And just about done here with game one. Normally I'll, and you saw it, of course, the text in the left corner of your screen, bottom left, to tell you what game it is. That's been weird today for some strange reason. And so while I attempt to make it correct, if you don't see it, of course, just remember that I'll let you know what game it is. Just finishing up game one. All right, Kelly's struggling a little bit here. Slow start. She shoots 178. Natasha Roslin shot 225 from Malaysia. And Holly Ann Johansson shot 203. Again, game one in the books. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors here, Nationwide, Smithfield, GoBowling.com, Pepsi, and Cubica AMF. All of your sponsorship of the PWBA Tour. Big thanks to all of our, of course, the ball manufacturers, apparel companies, accessories, and everyone who has a hand in the, the operations to make this thing happen. Our tournament director is Tennille Milligan. You may have heard of her. She's won a couple of uh, PWBA titles in her day. Assistant tournament director is Kathy Watka. Kathy Kavicki is our tour coordinator and a merchandise manager on site. So be sure to check out Kathy. The PWBA is coming to a local center near you. Kathy has the goods. She'll take care of you. Jason Thomas, our brand manager.
All right, we're off and running here in game number two. And Dasha Kovalova, Sabrina Divis, and Jen Higgins. We'll get a chance to see Linda Barnes there. Barnes just off to the left. Linda, extended play this morning. And a play she is very familiar with here, Wichita, of course, her husband Chris, a former Wichita State Shocker. Linda, of course, originally from Northern California. Standout collegiate player at San Jose State. With Kim Kearney. That's pretty cool, right? All right, folks, your qualifying, or excuse me, your continued standings, I should say, as we enter the catchers round now. One game in. And your score update is available. Be sure to check that out, pwba.com forward slash live. Everything is all good now in that department. So after one game, Rockman starting slow, shoots 164. Still leading, however, plus 229. Lee Jane Sin. Or Sinley Jane, I beg your pardon, at plus 212. Amanda Green in third at plus 158. Liana Franco in fourth at plus 136. Jen Higgins in fifth at plus 116. Liz Johnson is sixth at plus 111. Verity Crawley in seventh at plus 102. Josie Ernest Barnes in eighth at plus 67. Sabrina Davis in ninth at plus 61. Holly Ann Johansson in tenth at plus 58. Shannon Puhowski in 11th at plus 53. Shannon shot 236. She ended uh, her round last night with 224. And now continuing to build some momentum. She is tied for 11th with Diana Zabialova at plus 53. Mention what's going on on Extra Frame. Again, the Extra Frame Jonesboro Open. Also ongoing. So a couple of events for our, our view subscribers to Extra Frame. Appreciate it. Elsewhere, the Super Senior Classic continuing to roll on in Las Vegas. And Ken Azaro, Aaron Smith. We can use some coverage. Be sure to check out the Sport of Bowling USBC Facebook page for all of your updates. Leave either today or tomorrow. I'll double check that. Do some streaming on Bowl TV from the Super Senior Classic. We started a couple honor scores yesterday as well from the event.
Tasha Kovalova from Wichita State, former Shocker. Someone who else had a good run at the USBC Queens. Also, I think only a matter of time as she continues to get the experience at this level. Of course, uberly talented with her collegiate background and her international experience from the Ukraine. Sabrina Davis, first event back on tour. And she is back. The cash is round and looking to make match play. All-American at Midland University from Gillette, Wyoming. Take a look at Verity Crawley on the left side of your screen. Verity, you've seen before, seen her rev rate has been around this area of the lane all tournament, and she has done a lot of that. So talk about being versatile. She did not make her way down to our future pairs yesterday doing, during qualifying. But I uh, had Dave Waswo on for the bowler show. Dave had been watching uh, and perusing the lanes throughout the day. We chatted about where Verity was playing. I get in a situation where you can play middle of the lane and you can play to the right. That's what players are doing. They're doing a little bit of both. If you didn't know Verity's game and you just saw her one time, you would probably think or assume that she would play left and try to go left to right but not doing that and she gave you a very good reason why all right let's take a look over at Liz Johnson, two-time reigning PWBA Player of the Year. On in 2015, the first year of the relaunch and repeated last season, winning her third consecutive and fifth overall U.S. Women's Open title. Also in that player again, Juliana Franco from Colombia and Esther Chia from Malaysia. Crawley will appear on the right side of your screen this time on lane 23. Verity from England. Went to Weber International. Juliana. Good shot. Also on 23 and 24. Amanda was fifth after 12 games of qualifying. Lindenwood University product, first team All American. PWBA champion won the Lincoln Open in 2015. Ran away with it, start to finish. Here's Esther. That one is inside the 3610 is left.
Pardon me. Cash is round play, game two of six. Cash is round will go by relatively quickly. There's no position round here. No bowl six games, of course. We'll do the same for match play, but that game six is a position round. Blair's, uh, excuse me, some uh, viewers comment yesterday on Facebook. Talked about the international leaderboard at one point. Of course, last season was kind of the theme of the tour. Year one, obviously about the tour being back. Year two, national television was added. A little bit more exposure. Year two also brought about some players from other countries. Coming out to compete on the PWBA Tour. Jazreel Tan from Singapore won the 2015 Lubbock Sports Open. And she was a player who was pretty known here in the United States. Great success, of course, here at Wichita State. But last year, we saw not only Jazreel Tan, but other players from Singapore Example, the way Finn, Sherry Tan, Daphne Tan, Shayna Ung. Shayna had made a US Women's Open, uh, show, or excuse me, a Queens telecast prior to. So, again, a little familiarity, but as a whole, people got a, a vast understanding of how good Team Singapore is. And then we learned more about Team Malaysia as well last season. Both countries just kind of missed each other as Singapore final event was the Queens last year, was again this year. Last year, Malaysia started with the Queens. This year, they started right here at Wichita and already making some things happen for their five or five of their six, if I'm not mistaken. In the top 32, good shot there from Barry Crawley. The Queens generally always brings international talent. I talked to Maria Jose Rodriguez during the Queens, and I asked her why she thought the Queens brings about such an international uh, audience, if you will, a competitor base, and specifically from her native Colombia. And she said it, you know, the, the tiara, winning the tiara was something that uh, everyone always thought and dreamed about growing up and as you become better as a bowler. And I have to imagine that sentiment is, is true. I mean, that's that's really a, a world-type global event. This week, Sweden out on tour, which in Japan, and several players who will, are normally on tour, of course, and represent other countries. Diana Zabialova, for example, Latvia, Tanya Rao Mimper is from Indonesia. And many from Colombia. Aforementioned Maria Jose, Clara Guerrero, Rocio Restrepo, Angie Ramirez, of course, Juliana Franco, Johanna Puentes was here as well this week. Sandra Gangor is from Mexico. Daria Payuk is from Poland. A shot there from Divis off camera. Coming over to, again, compete with the best. Every week we get a chance to see what a world bowling type competition or a PAP kind of event could look like. It's a big, a big year from an international perspective. Look forward to not only the rest of the tour season, but if you follow women's bowling and bowling in general, again, towards the 
the end of the year, right after fall, early winter, if you will. All right, one more shot here from Liz Johnson. This will take us to, to the 10th frame. All right, Liz with four in a row. Linda Barnes. Linda's thrown some good shots this game, but been bitten by the split bug. Four splits for Linda in game two on 23 and 24. over to 25 and 26 here, 10th frame. 10th frame for 23 and 24 as well. This is Jen Higgins. All right, just clips to 3-6-10. Meanwhile, Liz Johnson strikes again. And Liz just continues to be great. It's very odd to think. But in the way it is, of course, right? It is what it is. There was no tour for a while, for several years, in fact, longer than a while. 12 years, and uh, Liz Johnson is still, and she accomplished a lot in those 12 years without a tour. But if there was one, you would wonder where, and same thing would would say for Kelly Kulik also. From a title count perspective, where she would be already at this point. Could she have or would she have overtaken Lisa Wagner, for example, all-time leader at 32? That's all of the, the what-if games you could play. But it's one of those things you think about, you question, man, wow. Because at this point, there's still no signs of stopping, which is incredible. As I said, she will continue to do it until she cannot do it anymore. Kelly says the same thing. Give us the spare in the 10th. 223 for Jen Higgins, 191 for Tasha Kovalova, 240 for Liz Johnson, 159 for Esther Chia. I think I may have fixed a problem. I love it when that happens. And we'll get Sabrina's fill shot here. Wants to try something a little different. Very smooth game. Able to extend. Use her length to her advantage. 195. Now Juliana Franco just finished up 202. And game two is in the books. Coming up in game three. We'll have a one-on-one, -on -one, if you will. Daria Payuk and uh, Clara Guerrero. Should be a pretty good uh, pretty good cross there. That's not a match, of course, but it's one I'd certainly pay a, pay a little bit to see. That begs a question, though. Hope everyone is doing well before I ask the question. Let's, let's even make sure that someone's watching us this morning. I haven't checked Facebook. Let's 
Say hello to Eric. Man watching from New York. Appreciate it, uh, Eric. Appreciate uh, all of your normal kind words, sir. I tell you what, folks, Facebook has just not been my friend this week. It has nothing to do with Facebook. It's the computer that I'm, <laughs> I'm using. I just I realized that uh, I'm using a browser I don't normally use. I will not mention said browser because I don't want anyone to you know, get any opinions based on what I'm doing. But I'm curious, though, since I know we have at least one viewer. So I'll talk directly to Eric. And folks, feel free to chime in. I mentioned, obviously, this is not a a one-on-one -on -one matchup. But if this was a match play or this was a championship round type event or match at the moment, Daria versus Clara, I, I, I'd want to see that match. So if you could come up with some dream type scenarios, you could be players from uh, 2017, it could be players from 1993. Aaron Smith talked about it a little bit during our during the Queens. We got into some things like that. If you could take a certain player from a certain year, era, etc., the 2001 Carolyn Doran Ballard versus the 1999 Wendy McPherson, those kind of things. What dream matchups would you like to see for a title match? That's our question for the day, or at least for this round. If you're familiar with Inside the NBA on TNT, Ernie Johnson's Neato Stat of the Night, brought to you by no one. So that's, that's what we're doing here. Our question brought to you by no one. But yeah, feel free to chime in. Get up by our Live Now post on Facebook. If you'd like to respond via Twitter, you certainly can do so. I know Yvonne is watching. Hello, Yvonne. Yvonne always uh, hits us up on Twitter. Appreciate that, Yvonne. Speaking of Facebook, I mentioned it earlier at the top of our broadcast, but be sure to check out uh, a lot of the media coverage from Wichita. Again, very thankful for the local media. We've had radio, TV, and print all come out to North Rock Lanes and cover this event. I believe we'll have a little more from the TV perspective later in the day. Uh, so big thanks to Wichita. Again, everyone generally knows that Wichita is such a bowling community. The Shockers in the backyard, Newman University in the backyard, of course. I talked about... Uh, North Rock Lane specifically. Of course, big thanks to the the DeSocios, Frank and Kathy. Big thanks to Brent Bowers and the entire staff here at North Rock Lanes also. Always quality. Brent's one of my favorite people. Some people, you recognize the uh, the passion very early on. And I met Brent a long time ago at this point, several years. As Hamidi off camera, you may have seen it. It's a little love on the 10 pin. Brent was, uh, I'm trying to think how old we were. I probably was about 19. Age of 19 was about the time I really started to really bowl well. Out of high school and then uh, a year into college, but I hadn't started bowling collegiately yet. I was at a school that did not have a program, which was fine at the time. When I got to my future destination, Lindenwood, but right before that, I 
learned a lot about, or I met a lot of players and learned about various. Hold on, folks. I'll be right back. All right, folks, sorry about that. I had to make sure everything was good. Um, nonetheless, forgot where I was at, but I know I was talking about Brent Bowers and how I met him. Totally off subject. I'll, I'll wrap it up, though. Brent, great dude, so young, talented player. Met him early. You start bowling stuff, you meet a lot of people in the bowling world. It's kind of how it works. Uh, and it helps when you're decently okay at throwing the ball, right? People ask you to bowl stuff, that kind of thing. Brent asked me to bowl World Team Challenge with him, but I couldn't. I was still early in the in the process and didn't really know that all of these things are like, you know, across the country in Vegas and everywhere but Chicago, basically. So, all right, okay, I understand how it works now. So you need to save money and those kind of things. But nonetheless... Didn't get a chance to bowl with Brent, but we've been cool ever since. Saw him in 2010 at the USBC convention. And he was there, um, I want to say as a, as a youth delegate at the time. I can't re recall, but, I mean, we talked and talked and ate some pizza afterwards. I mean, it was just amazing to talk to him. He was such a uh, an ambassador for youth bowling. Uh, and he was still a youth player, and I, I, I just hadn't seen that at that point in time. It was really something to, uh, and he's carried that on throughout, uh, through the, you know, not only youth bowling, but the sport in general. So if you didn't know anything about Brent Bowers, know that he is a fantastic person. He cares and will do anything for the betterment of the sport of bowling. That's my quick story on Brent Bowers.
Now, as we watch this match, again, it's not a match, but I, I keep calling it that because I posed a question earlier about if you could have a dream championship match, right? We're looking at Daria and Clara. This is the only pair with two, of course, here. I mean, uh, this would be a great championship match. You would, you would love to see that. Who would you like to see in a dream situation? It could be, you know, again, again it could be anybody. Not going to limit you there. It could be 2017 players. It could be players we see right now. It could be 1975. It could be the 1990 version of a current player. What if you wanted the 1996 Liz Johnson, her rookie season, and against the 2016 Liz Johnson? Just to the right of Clara, 23 and 24, is the trio of Team Malaysia. And the leader coming in, the second place leader was CT. Lee Jane Sin was second coming in. And Shai Donald Hamidi grabbed the final cashers round spot. So that's just the way that worked out, folks. So don't go thinking that. You know. The leader, the second place, and the 32nd spot in the catcher's realm crossed together. That's just how it goes. Hello, Judy. I'm going to be honest. I like all of our viewers. In fact, I love all of you. I really do. Uh, for me, it's more of a, uh, you know, I've done a lot of streaming and, and other sports and different things like that. This is always what I've wanted to do in regards to in the broadcast world, TV, radio, etc. And so I take uh, kind of I take a great pleasure in making sure that uh, like any great broadcaster for example you want to make sure that you have a dynamite relationship with the viewer so people loved Walter Cronkite and people like that for example Howard Cosell So it's cool for me to be able to chat with folks by name, even though I don't see them. But that's the point of it, right? You create that relationship, and then I feel like I know you. You feel like you know me, and you look forward to it. We look forward to talking to one another every week. It's like a phone call. Some of that family member, of course, hey, let's, let's have our weekly chat. I know Judy is an avid bowler. She's put in 31 years at the USBC uh, Women's Championships. She's going to Baton Rouge pretty soon, and now she's off to bowl in the 225 club. And she's going to watch until she has to leave. I mean, you have to appreciate that. Thank you, Judy. Thanks to Eric as well. Eric, Sal. Oh. Oh, we don't see that one every day from Daria. Make the spare here. 25 and 26 is in the, just entering the seventh frame. So we'll be able to finish this one here. Linda Barnes. Spare. The next five. And just left a um, or seven pin. She's on lane 29. Live scoring is available too, folks. Don't forget, good spare for Daria. Live scoring is available. You can access that at pwba.com slash live. Let's take a look at the scoreboard update. Scoreboard update brought to you in part by gobowling.com. I hope you caught the gobowling.com 400 a few weeks ago. It was just nearby in Kansas City. City Rockman continues to lead. 
Back in the strike train in game number two, 236. She's at plus 265. Her teammate, Sinley Jane, at plus 232, continues to be just solid. Jason Thomas told me a story yesterday. He watched her uh, throw a few shots right during his walkthroughs. And uh, he, she, he said she was doing something with the bowling ball, uh, something that, that looked to be it had a little surface on it, and uh, but but uh, the way she was playing the lanes, you know, had the surface hook stop, and uh, the ball was just hitting like a freight train. Some talented players, Silly Jane is one of them. She made two shells, and it was no accident. And she has won a lot in the international scene. Malaysian Open, Singapore Open, just to name a few. European champion as well. Amanda Green is in third at plus 153. Liz Johnson in fourth at plus 151. Verity Crawley in fifth, plus 146. Jen Higgins in sixth at plus 139. Juliana Franco in seventh at plus 138. Shannon Bluhowski in eighth at plus 79. Sabrina Divis in ninth at plus 56. Brittany Smith now making the run. So Brittany Smith was uh, minus. Uh, let's see, what was it? She was minus. Why don't I remember what she was? Nonetheless, she was like a spot out of the cut at the, the last game. Shot 245, I believe it was. to make the cut. Now moving on up to the east side with the deluxe apartment and the sky. She is in the match play at the moment. Josie Enters Barnes is 11th, tied for 11th with Kelly Kulik at plus 44. How about Shaidadal Hamidi? She was the number last night. First game shot 277. Shai Donald, of course, shot 300 last night, or excuse me, last season in the group step ladder finals. And route to becoming a TV finalist at the Wichita Open. And now she is just 11 pins out of the cut. Again, she was the number coming into the cashers round. She was 32nd, now in 13. She followed it with 187. And... Trying to get some carry here in the eighth frame off camera. Nachimi Itakura from Japan at plus 28. Daria Payuk from Poland at plus 26. All right, Payuk. Can get to 211. Clara. Can get to 246. Clara looks pretty comfortable here early on. Certainly an area of the lane she can play with the best. 246 for Clara. Ayuk with one of the best physical games, certainly on tour. She shoots 211. Now on to Liz Johnson. We'll finish this game out. Liz Esther Chia and Juliana Franco just saw him on 21 and 22 a game ago. Hello to Kim Meekins watching from Richmond, Virginia. Speaking of Richmond, the Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship back in Richmond in September.
be at the Richmond International Raceway in conjunction essentially with uh, that week's NASCAR race in Richmond. So it'll be a grand event there. Looking forward to that. We have one official, a player who officially has earned a spot, earned an invitation. That is Diana Zabialova, who won the 2017 USBC Queens last week. Last year, championship was also in Richmond at Uptown Alley. What a facility it was there. Upstairs, downstairs. Do you want to bowl, practice, bowl league and whatnot? We do it downstairs. If you want to have fun, hang out, bring the work crew, have a work outing, team building exercise or whatever, or the upstairs was, was the place for you as well. coolest uh, lane graphics, like on lane graphics I've seen. That was one of our most viewed pictures at that event uh, overall period last year. I think that how many views, but it got well over like a thousand likes. The Richmond, uh, excuse me, the, the lanes had uh, like trees and Dishes and, and various things like on the lane. Now, of course, it wasn't on the lanes, but there was it was graphics like right on the lanes. No arrows upstairs. So some of the players were wondering if we were to line up. I think that was the question. Based on what you see, the trees, the fishes, etc., where would you line up to play? It was pretty funny. Liz Johnson, she's not laughing because she's just continuing to mow down the pins. One eighty four for Esther Chia. Leon Franco. That's a good shot. A couple opens this game. That was just her fourth strike. A meaty four pin. You can see her off camera there. Well, you can see it in the corner on the left side of your screen. All right, Liz shoots 217. Another game in the bag for Liz. Jane, first sign of struggles for Lee Jane, 119 in the eighth, strike in the ninth, first one in the tenth, and went Brooklyn. Got a brief, lighthearted conversation with uh, Jim Callahan from Storm. Good folks all across the uh, the arena in regards to ball reps, Jimmy C, Dell Ballard Jr. Shot there from Lee Jane Sin. I talked about what uh, how Lee Jane was playing the lanes. I think I just kind of got a grasp of it. I actually seen her throw a shot. You didn't get a chance to see it, unfortunately. The good news is you will see it. In our next game, they're going to move over to 25 and 26. All right, she gets to 178. Could have been a lot worse. Appreciate all of our viewers, but uh, I know many of our players also watch and listen. So we thank you. Big thanks to, I mentioned this before, those who also listen. I know you're busy. 
Yeah, things happening. Can't always be watching, but you can certainly listen. And you take the time to do that. It's appreciated. It's a big shot there from Rockman. He's on the right lane on 24. So he went double open, double nine spare, nine spare strike, split. And now one more here will put her in the 190s. Church. CT in danger of losing the lead. All right, got some more viewers checking in. Let's say hello to Earl Bryant. Earl from Chicago. Earl, that's where I'm from, too. Shot town represent. Hello, Margaret. Watching from the, the ATL. Yvonne, of course, from the Chicagoland area in Oak Lawn. Just done that. You can't get as uh, you can't get closer to Chicago essentially than Oak Lawn. Joanne, that Darian Clary game, it, it it was awesome, and uh, those are the kind of matches, of course. And again, it's not a match, but when we get to that standpoint and match play, look for those type of matches where you say, "Man, wow, I would stop and watch this for you know 15 minutes." Kim, last year's uh, Smithfield uh, Tour Championship, it was indeed awesome. It, it absolutely was in every facet. From the fan support, of course, the sponsorship itself, but uh, mainly the fans. The Pro-Am was great. That's a place, Uptown Alley, if I lived closer, would be undoubtedly a spot that uh, I would bowl at. Or and even if I didn't bowl, I would certainly support the business. Great people. All right, the trio of Team Malaysia now on 25 and 26. And you'll get a chance to see how they are attacking the lanes. Sinli Jane, Siti Rahman, and Shaidal Hamidi on 21 and 22. We'll have our first look at Maria Jose Rodriguez, Daniel McEwen, and Brittany Smith. Those of you just checking in, this is the Cashers round of the PWBA Wichita Open. Live from North Rock Lanes in Wichita, Kansas. I'm with Jason Thomas, my name is Emil Williams Jr. Big thanks to you and all you do to support bowling and the Professional Women's Bowling Association. 
you do not have to watch this, and we understand. So I don't want you to think that we don't know that. But you watch it because you love it, you support it, and you want to see it grow. Tons of bowling going on this weekend. Again, on extra frame, the extra frame Jonesboro open. As PBA Commissioner Tom Clark has tweeted that in PBA, PWBA action, live simultaneously on extra frame. So, very good Saturday on extra frame. Super Senior Classic ongoing in Las Vegas. The Bros, Aaron Smith and Matt Canizaro. Brian Hirsch, they're doing their thing there. All right, Sinley Jane. with a double. Let's take a look at our 15 game score updates. Rockman still in the lead at plus 251. And Lee Jane in second at plus 210. Liz Johnson in third, plus 168. In fourth, Verity Crawley, plus 165. In fifth, Amanda Green at plus 123. Liana Franco in sixth at plus 119. Jen Higgins is in seventh at plus 117. Shannon Pluhowski is in eighth at plus 97. Kelly Kulik is ninth at plus 72. Brittany Smith in tenth at plus 62. Clara Guerrero and 11th at plus 61 and in 12th Shannon O'Keefe at plus 58. A couple big games or one big game I should say 244 and uh, plus 59 for three to Shana Sarouse from Maryland Eastern Shore by way of Aruba. She is plus 43 and in 13th. Sabrina Divis is in 14th at plus 42. Sabrina just not able to uh, put, some, so put some strikes together. She is falling down the standings. Daria Payuk in 15th at plus 37. All right, we see a couple three baggers over on 25 and 26. Let us check out. Other pair that is 21 and 22. Sinley Jane with four in a row. Brittany Smith now on 22 with four in a row. You get a chance to watch Maria Jose Rodriguez. Maria was the runner up last year at the Wichita Open. She's a major champion. Won the Queens in 2014. Good shot there. Danielle McEwen, your defending champion. D Mac. Let's 
It's about the time where Daniel McEwen went into uh, autopilot, if you will. She was out of the cut number just for the sake of it. Let's see where she's at right now. McEwen is 27th. Okay, minus 18. Three games left, uh, two and a half at this point of the cashers round. I mean, very ir eerily similar. Don't remember exactly how many pins she was out of the cut last year, but she was out of the cut. Could we see a repeat performance? I mean, we could. She's certainly capable. We'll keep our eye on it for sure. I've mentioned it a few times this weekend, but she shot 7.53 to make the cut, make the match play cut, then went to and shot 8.23. First three games of match play. An extra 2.76 in there. Went on to win the title, defeating Maria Jose Rodriguez. That show was taped at the Eswabanon Bowling Alley, part of the Go Bowling PWA Players Championship. Of course, our second major will be the same thing again this week, or excuse me, in a couple weeks. Our second major in Green Bay will take four shows. One will be live. It'll be live on June 25th, noon Eastern, our second major of the year. You can check the live stream and the broadcast schedule on PWBA.com. We'll have to turn our attentions back to Lee Jane Sin here. That says Lee Jane on the uh, on our scoreboards here. Normally you'll see her name written Sin Lee Jane. But her first name is indeed Lee Jane. Had a pretty good uh, six lane player cross going on going here. We've got Danielle, Maria, Brittany Smith. And you got Jaria, Claire in the middle. Then you go Team Malaysia here. Sidney Jane, CT Rockman, and Sidal Hamidi. Pretty good. Go back to Rockman. She shot 297 last night and during qualifying. Front five. How about six? Throwing pins, Daria Pike. All right, Lee Jane, four seven in a row. Bang. They're not even close. No doubters.
Seven ten there, of course, for Rockman. D Mac just left at two ten. See where the three members of Team Malaysia are playing. Playing to the right. Brittany Smith, boy, just left a nasty nine pin. In the eighth frame. We'll take you there momentarily, but we'll depend on what Lee Jane has in store for us here. Stepping up in the eighth frame. You're watching it live here on Extra Frame. Uh, all right, four pin. Good run. Well, you see where she's playing the lanes. The surface. Very aggressive. Ball speed is high. Keeping it online. It's not really doing much. Except just... Crushing pins when it gets to the 1 3. Rockman back on it. Over to 21 and 22. Beck Whiting watching from Australia. Australia was represented on the tour last few weeks as well. Dina Buxton, Caitlin Comain. We had several come out for the uh, for the Fountain Valley Open additional, along with the USBC Queens. Sand Fisher, Alexa Hicks. And I'm probably leaving out a couple. My apologies there, but uh, absolutely. Carol Giannotti versus Kara Honeychurch, her dream match. I like that one. That would be pretty cool. Those of you who are just joining me or just commenting for the first time, I posed a question as we watched uh, Daria and Clara a game ago. So who would be, who would you like to see in a kind of a dream championship match uh, type setting? It could be anybody, any time period. Jane Sin, meanwhile, off camera, back on the strike train in the ninth. Back set again, Carol Giannotti versus Kara Honeychurch. Forgot to mention Judy Kirkwood. She did say she would like to see Leanne Holsenberg and Carolyn Doran Ballard right now. I would like to see that too. So feel free to drop your comment to your dream title match. You could even pick a certain year if you'd like. You could pick the 2001 Carolyn Dorn Ballad when she won seven titles. <laughs> One of my favorite people. Maria showing some cool emotion. Queuing up now, 10th frame. Good shot. We'll get a look at Brittany Smith. Rookie of the year candidate for 2017. And, uh, missed a little right, and it just hung. Brittany was working her way up the leaderboard.
take a look at Danielle one more here. Danielle got that one right as well, and pretty much, of course, minus the four. The same result as Brittany Smith. I think, folks, you just got a really good idea what the 42-foot pattern, 27.66 milliliters of oil, has allowed for the players what they can and really can't do. For the most part, you just don't throw it there. Although we saw players do, did throw it there a little bit yesterday. But again, less players bowling overall today. And the factors, of course, in regards to uh, what game it is, etc. Well, Sinley Jane probably going to take over the lead here. Final shot, 79 looking. 79 got it. 279 for Lee Jane. Mark Rockman puts another one on the board as well. Take you back to Maria Jose Rodriguez here to finish out game number four. Let's see who will go first. Of course, they'll both go simultaneously. Rockman. Rodriguez. in for City. Very nice game, 253. Maria Jose, poor pin. All right, 221 for Maria. 253, Rockman, 190. Shaidal Hamidi, 279. Salih Jane, Brittany Smith, 225. Danielle McEwen, 199. Game five, coming up next. Who do you have on game five? Well, let's find out. Game five, Brandy Branca, Diana Zavialova, Shannon O'Keefe. We saw them earlier. They kicked us off game number one. Been on 25 and 26. Uh, Tashina Sarouse, Tanya Raumimper, and Shannon Pluhowski will be on 25 and 26. We'll, by virtue, of course, of where we are, we'll also get a few shots of Sandra Gungora, Missy Parkin, and Christina Rosberg. So, momentary break shouldn't be too long. finishing up of course I don't think everyone was on the stream uh, the same strike pace <laughs> for example as uh, some of the pairs were that were in front of us well, pretty darn good here so what we'll do and what I'll do I'm gonna take a very small break while I can smelling the aromas of breakfast and so I might try to 
Do a little bit of that myself while I have a chance. Game five is coming up next. Again, 25 and 26. Janet Pulowski, Tanya Sarouse, Tanya Rob Imper. Brandy Branca, Diana Zavialova, Shannon O'Keefe on our featured pairs. So, players are down now. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're watching the PWA Wichita Open Live. Bull TV on Extra Frame.
All right, folks. Game five, off and running. Jonathan Rouse, Blue Houseki, Shannon P. And Tanya Raumimper, again 21 and 22. Brandy Branca, Diana Zavialova, Shannon O'Keefe, 23 and 24. You see Missy Parkin on the left side of your screen. Christy Rosberg and Sandra Gungor. If you hear any Remote noises. That may sound like a, a cell phone vibrating or something like that. I did make an order. Apparently the breakfast sandwiches here at uh, North Rock Lanes are, are serious business. So I have one of those uh, devices where if you were at a restaurant and you went in to uh, grab yourself a table and they gave you a, a device and it would vibrate or ring once your table was ready. That, that is what I have. Scott from Melbourne, Australia. Thanks, Joanne. I mentioned you earlier, but did not say where you were watching from. Seattle. That's a place still on my list to, to get to, on my bucket list, Seattle. Want to check out all kinds of stuff. Safeco. Bring my umbrella, because just in case. The Supersonics go back to Seattle. I'm on a plane. So, Joanne, as soon as that happens, we're going to give you a shout. Give us the lowdown on Seattle. Jason Thomas spent a lot of time in Seattle, of course, these days of the PBA tour. Hello, Brian. Watching from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Brian said Kelly and Liz. You cannot go wrong with that for a title. That certainly would be must see TV. Game five, kind of presenting uh, early struggles here. Already seeing some different ways that the lanes are being played. You see the contrast where 
It's in Lee Jane who shot 279. CT Rockman shot 253 on this pair. Sprouts there, open frame and the four. Take a look at uh, our scores here. Again, don't forget all of the information you need is on pwba.com slash live. Want to check yesterday's qualifying results? You can. Today's cashers round results, rosters pairing, live scoring as well. Luhowski strike in the fourth frame. Update nearing completion. Let's take a look at Rob Mimper. Wichita State Shocker. She's an alum. Leave coming off a nice 240 game. Osberg. Early double and a spare for Christie. to appear on the left side of your screen. Oh, a little break for Shannon. Shannon's got the family here. Mom, Dad. The only person missing here is Tiffany. She's watching, which she normally does. We hope to see you soon at some point. All right, Sorrell struggling a little bit here. Now leaves a 210. She's had some 210, 248, 2810 type combinations. Mimper. Wow. Well, this is not 21 to 22. We saw some hang. A couple of players playing the gutter. Uh, in game four. That's a very good shot there from Sir Rouse. Perhaps a ball change, maybe. frame on the bucket there for Gongora. here at Pluhowski at the Sorrell Spare. And look at where Shannon is playing from the left side. 
Checking this, uh, this cash is around here. Let's see. First of all, let's check our score update. It is available. Rockman, how about that? Does not give away the lead to her team Malaysia teammate, Sin Lee Jane. At 253, kept her in the lead. Over Sinley Jane, CT plus 304. Sinley Jane plus 289. Liz Johnson in third at plus 192. In fourth, Verity Crawley plus 160. Juliana Franco is in fifth at plus 144. Jen Higgins in sixth at plus 131. Shannon Puhowski in seventh at plus 119. Amanda Green is in eighth at plus 112. Clara Guerrero. Tied for ninth with Shannon O'Keefe at plus 95. Brittany Smith in 11th at plus 87. And Diana Zavialova is 12th plus 67. Speaking of O'Keefe. Ross got that one right. Didn't see it off camera. It wasn't too bad, though. I mean, it was a pretty good shot, but it was just a hair right. Hung a little bit on the gutter. And a 2 4 10. And uh, that one is in through the nose. Gungora. She just left the 4 6. Wachowski. Back on the strike train in the seventh. Brandy Branca. Stoned in the eight pin in this game. Now a 10 pin here. In the seventh. Keith gets a break there. Strikes have certainly slowed down here in game five. This is the time where we start to look at, obviously we're looking at the match play cut, but we're looking at uh, who is in what, or could be in what groups from a seed perspective. If you're unfamiliar with uh, standard event formats, match play, again, cut down from 32 to the top 12, and then the groups are broken down or the match play group in general is broken down into two groups, group A and group B. Odds in group A, evens in group B. So if we were to start right now, CT Rockman would be the leader of group A, Sidley Jane would be the leader of group B. Robin within their groups across the house. At the end of six games, the leaders of those respective groups will make TV. Seats two, three, and four of each group will bowl in our group stepladder finals.
Missy Park is. Missy is minus 19. Would love to shoot 247 here this game. Don Gora, 710. Sandra was plus 16. She was making a run. And this game, boy, four splits for Sandra. 710, she's left at 4-6. Four, 4 splits this game for Gonagora. See if O'Keefe can bounce back. Eighth frame. High flush. So Rouse finds the pocket in the eighth frame as well. Zabialova, two-time Queens champion. Shot, she's been playing there throughout the day for the most part. Rao Mimper, 3-6-10. Look at where Sarouse is playing. The ball change for her. And finally, some love for Gonagora. She strikes in the ninth. Can max at 180. We'll try to save this game. Andy Branca striking off camera. She's near the number. Here is Sarouse. Another good shot. Oliver will be up in the ninth frame, as will Shannon Puchowski. Puchowski nestled up against the ball return, as you can see. The lefty, it's got to hurry. Seven nine. All right, high flush for Rao Mimper in the ninth frame. First shot in the 10th, a goody. Oh, come on back. Uh, Shannon gave that one a ride there. And now Puhowski. Can max at 190. Brinka. Nine pin. She can shoot 185. Nine spare strike here in the 10th. We'll see Missy Parkin on the right side of your screen. Missy with a double. Here's her first shot in the 10th. And it is inside 369-10. I would never got right. Spare strike will give her 223. And Puhowski off camera with a strike first shot of the 10th. O'Keefe now with a three backer as she enters the 10th frame and strikes on the first shot. Gora, that's the ball going to the right side right now. And that one was a little bit outside.
right, Shannon O'Keefe. Much needed. Blue after the first shot of the 10th, a good one. He is left with the 6 8 10. made it. Zabi Oliva. Open in the ninth, first shot in the tenth. Rosberg. Side there on the first shot uh, in the tenth frame. A good game brewing there. She can still, still shoot 224. O'Keefe able to save the game for 203. It's a big game for O'Keefe. Plus 95, tied for ninth. Did not give any pins back. Zabialova, 12th at plus 67. Needs to get all she can here in game six. That one just kind of sails. Al Mimper picked up the PBA washout there, but she can only get to 149 this game. After making up a lot of ground, shooting 241. She will lose a lot of pins. In fact, she will drop down to the minus numbers. 176 for Zabialova. Boy, this 12th spot here, maybe even the 11th, kind of similar to last night's Cashers round. Well, anything can happen. Big thanks again to the North Rock staff here. I told you about the food I ordered. Well, it started ringing at about the eighth frame. Couldn't get to get up and uh, leave the broadcast there to go grab it. I was going to wait till right now, but the good folks, of course, you know what they did. They brought it over to me. How about that? Okay. Game six. Josie Ernest Barnes, Liz Culkin, and Chimi Itakura. Linda Barnes, Amanda Green, and Verity Crawley on 21 and 22. 25 and 26 bowling first, and that's where we'll begin.
voice you heard there was Brian O'Keefe. Brunswick representative. Of course, husband of Shannon. O'Keefe had a great bull in his own right. Another voice you may have heard was Sabrina Davis. Just chatting through there that last shot. advice for anyone wait on it at the top of the swing well, I don't know how many times my man Will Clark Randy Lightfoot Mike Hallway just wait on it son wait on it I'll tell me Linda Barnes, good start. Verity Crawley, back on it. Chelsea Ernest has the front five. All right, let's look at our scores. 17 games. I'm going to go right to the match play cut. It's plus 50. It is Nachimi Itakura. Zabialova in 13th at plus 43. Clara is in 11th at plus 80, so she's got 30 pins on 12th. Brandy Branca is 14th at plus 40. Daria Paiuk is 15th at plus 36. Maria Jose Rodriguez is 16th at plus 32. Natasha Roslin, 17th at plus 27. Who else could get there? Well, Kelly Kulik is minus 5 in 18th. She could still get there. She needs some help, though. Itakura strikes in the sixth frame. Your leader, C.T. Rockman, still plus 351. Sin Lee Jane, second, plus 323. Well, they've got some significant leads if they are to lead and head on to match play. In group A right now, Verity Crawley would be second. She's at plus 172, again, the leader, plus 351. Sinley Jane would be the leader of group B right now if we were to stop. And Juliana Franco would be second at plus 154. there in the thick of things trying to make match play. Liz Culkin, time for 28th at minus 40 with Sabrina Divis. Lova in 32nd. All right, spare made for Itakura. Josie Ernest Barnes, of course, in the front seven. to 
right to start to a 10. Josie in the standings. Is 19th at minus six. So this game to make the cut. It's Akira. Strikes in the eighth. Amanda Green struck. Ernest Barnes with count. She had 205 in the eighth. Right now she is minus one. Jimmy Itchikura is plus 50. Zabialova is a little out of our camera range for sure. It looks like she's got 86 in the fifth. She is currently 13th, seven pins behind Itchikura. Liz Colkin. Take a shot for Liz. There's Linda Barnes. Again, check out the story done by Lionel Tipton from the Wichita Eagle. It's posted on the PWBA Facebook page. Chelsea Ernest Barnes is going to bowl first. Here's her ninth frame shot. Oh, boy. Josie, another split. It's a Cura, ninth frame shot. Josie is making it a little difficult, and the two pin rolls. All right, Jose, should be need a spare shooter here. Works on it all day with uh, the Vanderbilt ladies to talk about splits and spares. She'll take the count there. And now for Josie. Max score 243. She could only get to plus 37 overall. She would need something catastrophic from Itakura, for example, here in the 10th frame. Of course, she needs to strike out front seven, 2 8 10, and then the. I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, four pin. She left on the left lane the three, four, six, seven. Shot there. She goes nine spare or any spare. She'll be at 202. Two thirteen for Liz Colkin. Mary Crawley comfortably in the cut. Despite the split here in the 10th frame. Last shot for Ernest Barnes. Two 
29. Joseph will finish at plus 23. May not be enough. Maybe she's going to need some help. It's a Cura. He's a 10 pin. So now she can go spare strike for 202. And she would be at plus 52. And that's a number that's looking pretty good at the moment. to Linda Barnes. Finished off with a very nice 2-11. And Chikura finishes things out. She shoots 199, gives one back. Very bold. I think that would be enough. Amanda Green shoots 195. She'll drop to plus 91. She'll be okay. Jen Higgins shot 202. She is now plus 96, so they will switch spots. At the very least. Unsure where Claire is. Or what she's bowling. She was 11th at plus 80. And Chimi Itakura, again now at Plus 49. Zavialova could pass her. All right, so no bowling, of course, in our future pairs. So, and a little difficult to get some angles here. But uh, we'll try some things. Hold on a second. Well, not much here, but actually I could probably make it a little better. So Brandy Branca. Branca first shot in the 10th. Kelly finishing up. Kelly will mismatch play this week. O'Keefe. Shannon of 7th at plus 98.
right, big shot here for Brandy Brinka. She can get to the two O's here. And she flat tens. So for Brinka. Like 193, the best she can do there, which will drop her total to plus 33 overall. Zavialova opened in the ninth. Looks like the best maybe she can do now is 180. So that won't be enough. But, uh, again, unless something catastrophic did take place in the final game, and some bowlers in the cut, we'll know for sure once the official announcement is made and the scores are officially tallied. 193 for Brinka officially. O'Keefe in the 230s. She's okay. Shannon O'Keefe. It's Christy Rosberg. All right, Zabialova to finish things out. I see a couple circles in her score. Three splits. Wash out here, so Diana Z will not make match play. Finishes with one sixty nine. So we may not have any movement. Our final in the top 12 from the 17 game update. It could exactly or be exactly the same as in regards to the players. There'll be a few scores that change. But Zabialova had a chance. Brandy Branca at this point is plus 33. Unsure with Daria Paiu shot. As well as Maria Jose Rodriguez. So look out for those two players. You know it's a cura. Is at plus 49, she should be in without an issue. But we'll find out, folks. So the top 12. Top 12 announcement is forthcoming. Appreciate all of you tuning in this morning. Had some fun this morning. That was a fun cashers round. Well, some good questions. Let me refresh Facebook. I mentioned the Super Senior Classic. Aaron Smith, Mac Anazaro, Brian Hirsch out there doing some work. They are now live on Bowl TV with uh, cashers round action from the Super Senior Classic. So. Again, a nice full day of bowling at every level. PBA, the Jonesboro Open on okay, extra frame. If you're wanting to put bowling balls out to transfer to Lincoln, there is a section in the locker room for you to do so. Again, transport to Super Senior Classic, and of course, the best woman in the world here at the PWBA Tour. Big thanks to Tiffany Pluhowski. She was watching. I made her comments on Facebook. That's that's even better, actually. But again, big thanks to all of our viewers. Tiffany Pluhowski, Joanne Stossel, Eric Moritz, Scott Berger, 
Margaret Smith, Earl Bryant, Kim Meekins, Yvonne Dunnett, Judy Kirkwood Stenhouse, Brian McLean, Beck Whiting, Kim Meekins, and those are just from our Facebook post for those who have commented. I know many of you already have been watching, so we thank all of you. Again, uh, we are waiting for the top 12, the official announcement. Uh, who will make match play? Match play will begin at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Again, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern time. While you wait, get a lot of great Facebook content if you haven't seen it. Kelly Kulik, London Barnes, great stories written by reporters from the Wichita Eagle. Good interviews from Claire Guerrero and Sandra Gangora, Maria Jose Rodriguez from KSN TV. That's on Facebook. Just a couple shots from 102.1, their live remote from Thursday's official practice session. CT <laughs> Safaya shot uh, 297. That video is on Facebook. She shot that last night. She had the front six earlier today, as well as her teammate, Sidley Jane. So what would we could be looking at, speaking of Malaysia? We could uh, go into match play with uh, Malaysia leading the event in both realms. The Group A and Group B leaders could be both from Malaysia. And if it were to remain that way, they both would make TV automatically. Storylines building. How about Nichimi Itakura from Japan? If our numbers are correct, she should make match play. Could be wrong, but she shot 199, only gave one back. She should be, or at least around 12th. She was 12th going into the last game. Is it time for a newcomer? Verity Crawley has already made one TV show. Could she make another? She made the Fountain Valley Open show. She's the number two seed. That show will air June 20th on CBS Sports Network. How about Juliana Franco from Colombia? She's in the match play. Can she make a run? She was the round one leader. She's been solid throughout the week, the weekend, I should say. Liz Johnson will be there. How about Brittany Smith, 2017 Rookie of the Year candidate? She'll be in match play. Again, barring something crazy that took place, she was in triple digits, a plus 116 entering the final game. Shannon O'Keefe shot 230. She should be good. I did not see what Shannon Pluhowski shot. She was at plus 97. I can't imagine Shannon taking a dip in the standings at this point, but anything can happen. Amanda Green solidified her spot. 
Shot, uh, I think, 195. That would be enough. Jen Higgins shot 202. Or was it 199? I can't remember. It might be 199 for Green. Either way, she should be okay. I am unsure what Clara shot. She was at plus 80. And I can get a cure from Japan. Drop down to plus 49. Stop Yalava. She was 13th going in. Shot a buck 69. Randy Branca had a chance. She shot 193. Randy may be 13th after it's all said and done. Unsure what Daria Payuk shot. Well, she could be 13th. About Maria Jose Rodriguez. Unsure what she shot as well. So a couple things to determine, but uh, look forward to it. They just saw a video. Of course, we're in Wichita. A lot of Wichita State Shockers are on the PWA Tour and competing this week. Ace Thomas, nice video. The Shockers competing here in the Cashers round. Of course, we can't go to Lincoln and not do that next week. We'll try to do that as well. Lincoln is our next stop. And make your plans to be with us. Sun Valley Lanes. John Lacito, the proprietor there for the Pepsi PWBA Lincoln Open. June 8th through the 10th. I'll be there. God is willing. <laughs> try to catch something cool this time in Lincoln. They try to hit up a Lincoln Salt Dogs baseball game or downtown Lincoln. I know it's a pretty cool area. After that, uh, we head to Detroit. for the Greater Detroit Open. Shannon O'Keefe, your defending champion for next week's Pepsi Lincoln Open event. Rocio Restrepo, defending champion of the Greater Detroit event. And then our, our ladies and gentlemen, I have your top 12 second major, but here's Sunil Milligan. Starting at one o'clock, your tournament leader at plus 365, Cindy Ruckman. And second, at plus 358, Lee Jane Sin. And third, Juliana Franco at plus 173. Currently in fourth, Verity Crawley at plus 165. Fifth place, Shannon O'Keefe at plus 132. And sixth, Liz Johnson at plus 98. Qualifying seventh, Shannon Plahowski at plus 97. In eighth, we have Jen Higgins at plus 96. Ninth, Amanda Green, plus 91. Tenth place, Clara Guerrero, plus 75. All final eleventh, Brittany Smith at plus 74. Uh, unsure what Maria Jose Rodriguez shot. And she sneaks into the match play cut at plus 60. And that is why you always wait for the official announcement. Dolph Assure, Nachimi Itakura maybe had done enough to make the cut. But instead, it looks like she will fall just a few pins shy of the number. 11 pins to be exact. And almost trouble for Brittany Smith, who dropped to plus 74. She is in 11th. She was at plus 116. Well, all right, folks. Our match play uh, participants are now set. City Rockman is your leader, followed by Sin Lee Jane. They will be the leaders of groups A and groups B, respectively. Maria Jose Rodriguez snags the final match play spot. She is in 12th. Match play will begin at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Please join us for what should be uh, some more great bowling. If the cashers round is anything to add, 
man, we, we this was a pretty fun one this morning. I would say probably the, the best we've seen on tour so far, just from a cashers round perspective. It was pretty cool to watch. All right, match play again around the corner. Don't forget the nugget of note to keep in mind, burn squat match play, no re-oil. So be on the lookout when we begin in just a couple of hours. We'll talk to you then. For Jason Thomas and our entire PWA staff, my name is Emil Williams, Jr. We'll see you soon, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. You're watching the PWBA Wichita Open Live, Bowl TV on Extra Frame.